Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the Africa Center for Strategic Studies um, members, distinguished participants, my fellow panelists, uh, it is really great to see um, Dr. Emil again and to hear his uh, very insightful presentation. I am indeed honored to follow on uh, this discussion to talk about critical thinking and how it can contribute to professionalism uh, in, in the military and in general in the security sector. Um, I will speak mostly from the perspective of a trainer um, from uh, the military side of the house and probably provide um, con a context that will elicit discussion and um, maybe jog your critical thinking as well putting together what Dr. Emila said and the issues of critical thinking and what we can do in this area to uh, build the professionalism of government officials and more so those in the security sector. So I will look at critical thinking um, and again, uh, try uh, to give you some perspectives in this. So I'll focus on the subject, critical thinking to enhance professionalism in Africa's security sector. To put us into perspective, I would like to begin with a quote from Pearl Zhu, who said, critical thinking is not automatic thinking. It takes extra effort to think critically. So what is critical thinking? And critical thinking uh, definitions have evolved over the years. And today I've just considered two definitions that will help us uh, situate the issue of critical thinking. The first one is from the African Philosophical Association that defined critical thinking as purposeful, self-regulatory judgment that uses cognitive tools such as interpretation, analysis, evaluation, inference, and explanation of the evidential or contextual considerations on which judgment is based. Now, the second and uh, less complicated definition of critical thinking is in short self-directed, self-disciplined, self-motivated, and self-corrective thinking. And this definition uh, presupposes the ascent to rigorous standards of excellence and the mindful command of their use. Put in mind mindful command of their use, putting in context what has just been talked about in terms of um, the security sector and in its engagement in security within the confines of its nation or the region. So it entails effective communication and problem solving abilities and a, commu a commitment to overcome our egocentricism and sociocentrism. Um, many a times we find it very difficult as um, members of different sectors of the security sector to work together, mainly because of our egos and our social um, biases. But if um, critical thinking is inculcated in officers, then working together would be a little more easier and uh, much more productive for a nation that is seeking security for itself and its citizens. So every military officer and government official must develop rigorous habits of critical thinking. It is an essential tool for the military and government official. Because critical thinking involves analyzing information objectively, evaluating different perspectives and making informed decisions. And critical thinking is important for military education and education in general, as far as you find yourself in leadership, because it provides a powerful tool to operate in an environment that is often known to be volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. 
what is commonly known as the VUCA environment. And operating in this constantly changing and unpredictable environment where nothing is certain can be very disorienting and difficult to navigate. So military officers and government officials working in this environment must be able to change quickly and make decisions without, in some cases, complete information. In a very complex and ambiguous environment, it is important to be able to discern between reliable information and from noise uh, that is around us. From a military perspective, you know that today's military officers experience a lot of forces, both internal and external. External dynamics have become very influential in the way we conduct ourselves and provide security for our respective countries. So in the effort to manage these forces, we find it very, very difficult um, to operate because we are increasingly facing diverse military threats. We are looking at asymmetric war. We are looking at um, um, transnational conflicts and so on and so forth. A lot of political undercurrents that influence us, financial challenges, that um, have an impact on our resources. We also have public health issues, cybersecurity risks, change in technology, managing talents within our, uh, our ranks and file. So really it is a complex, complex situation. And to meet these challenges, uh, military officers must be flexible, agile, and swift in identifying the forces to strategically assimilate new information and to make appropriate decisions based on the information that is available to them. Now, the ability to show um, resilience strategic and strategically assess challenges from available information and give solutions to those problems is very, very important to sustaining a military's or a government's performance. As such, it is important for us to harness competencies of officers within um, our ranks and file. And critical thinking, which is the ability to recognize unexpected situations and to make sense of them, decide on the cause of action and construct knowledge during problem solving, often while the situation continues to unfold as options are being considered. Things are very dynamic. When you think about what is going on in our countries, sometimes one day you're dealing with security on um, unrest by the youth. The next you're dealing with asymmetric warfare. The next you're dealing with human security issues. All these security challenges really need um, leaders in the security sector who are able to think quickly and decide on the best course of action to take to secure the security of the nation. So it is a really uh, essential component of professional accountability and operational effectiveness. And critical thinkers exhibit uh, certain important uh, habits. They have minds that uh, show confidence, contextual perspective, creativity, flexibility, inquisitiveness, intellectual integrity, intuition, open-mindedness, uh, perseverance, and reflection. Some of these qualities are not easy to come across given the kind of um, education and command-based um, uh, culture that we have in the military. We um, sometimes question questions. We question questions from our subordinates, but it is important to keep um, an open mind. So critical thinkers um, need to practice, practice cognitive skills of analyzing, applying standards, discriminating, information seeking, and logical reasoning. Also predicting and transforming knowledge. Simply put, critical thinkers helps us to learn how to think, 
rather than what to think. And I must emphasize as an education person that to achieve this continuous learning that inculcates critical thinking is essential. Progressively military leaders must learn to become adept to properly examining situations, constantly uh, improvising and addressing challenges that will uh, affect their countries in the present and in the future. Not only can critical thinkers raise officers' awareness of their possible dilemmas, but it enables them to modify missions and to create contingency plans in an informed manner. So a critical, um, critical thinking, when applied, uh, can better tackle challenging situations and make well thought out decisions. And this takes deliberate development of the officers at whatever level they are to be able to develop these skills. And I know that a number of our military education institutions on the continent take professional military development very, very seriously. And this is evident from the number of uh, military institutions that exist, both um, middle and higher level military institutions across the continent of Africa. So I ask, have professional military education institutions in Africa fully embraced critical thinking as central to their curricula? Is it mostly taught just as a one-off subject without clear connection to the rest of the programs offered in our training institutions? Or has it been integrated in learning from entry into the service and progressed as the officer grows in his career. So two questions usually arise in the promotion of critical thinking in curriculum. And I insist on curriculum because we must be very de um, deliberate in the way we develop our officers, very deliberate in what we teach them and how we develop them in terms of making decisions um, at a higher level. So should we separate the course and teach critical thinking separately or should we integrate it? In my opinion, I would think that both would, would be good because critical thinking um, provides an opportunity for uh, critical thinking uh, as a separate course will give the concepts of critical thinking and so on. But as the courses, courses develop, it is important for them to practice that critical thinking as they exercise, as they work in groups, as they engage with one another. But even before we talk about teaching critical thinking, we must ask ourselves, what is the entry behavior of our officers? Whether they are straight out of high school or from universities. Traditionally, um, we have seen that higher education is expected to produce literate sophisticated thinkers who are equipped with the knowledge and intellectual abilities needed to inform the successful uh, progress in their career. Yet, we must admit that there is a growing concern that many students do not leave college with the literacy, intellectual understanding and depth of understanding supposedly implied in the degrees that they have earned. And this puts um, the military uh, education uh, institutions in um, a very difficult situation because they have to go back and foster the development of these sophisticated thinking abilities in their colleges and in their courses. We usually recruit the best, at least in most of our countries, but while our students are academically successful, um, are they and are typically able to absorb information and memorize facts and learn fixed procedures, they experience difficulties in critical thinking and creativity uh, about what they are learning. And therefore, it is important that we really look at those that we are recruiting into the military, especially for the leadership 
further. Are these people who will be able to digest inf information? Are these people who will be able to look at um, the environment around them and discern what they need to do best for, for their country? Since independence, Kenya has taken concerted efforts to build the capacity of military officers in an ever-changing national and international environment. You are aware that the region that we come from is indeed the essence of VUCA with a lot of uncertainties, a lot of uh, volatility. And this begins at the cadet level, where in the early years, in the 60s and 70s, emphasis was mostly placed on academic qualifications and a very colonial curriculum was um, implemented with very little or no appeal at all to critical thinking. And that occasioned a change in the way we um, have approached the training of our officers. Today, uh, our Kenya uh, Military Academy has developed into a premier training institution for basic and foundational military officer training. And it attracts not only Kenyan officers, but regional allied countries, bringing together regional and international actors. The officer training is anchored on leadership, character development, professional military training, and formal academic training. The overall objective of this particular training is to produce well-founded young military leaders to prepare them for leadership, command, and inspire them to pursue professional military excellence. And this is where the seed of critical thinking is planted. This is where the officer is created and the mind is uh, prepared to begin looking at things um, from very different perspective. And it provides a foundation to build their competencies through the various levels of middle career courses all the way to war college. And I'm sure this is not unique to Kenya. It is something that is happening in most of our African countries. At the higher level, critical thinking is taught as a standalone course. And then um, students are exercised in small groups and classroom activities as designed uh, to develop critical thinking. Officers are equipped with intellectual attributes necessary for understanding critical analyze, uh, analysis and providing effective solutions to contemporary security challenges. The challenges for many um, institutions is how critical thinking can best be taught in an integrated manner in an already very, very busy discipline or content laden curriculum. Um, so uh, the most important thing is to adopt a learner-centered approach that will ensure innovative approaches to uh, problem-based learning. Um, now, um, improving critical skills or, and, and, and acknowledging the importance of critical thinking is not new to uh, professional military uh, education. Uh, equal to, uh, to developing, de uh, developing these skills is the attainment of sensitivities that support the inclination of critical thinking skills in a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. So this should be encouraged that once the participants leave uh, a training institution, we follow them on to, uh, to, to, to support their uh, decision-making processes while uh, they are out on the job. So critical thinking can be taught and learned. And students will improve critical thinking when appropriate instructional methods and curriculum uh, materials are used. And active learning strategies are important and student to student and instructor to instructor interactions must take place to encourage um, improvement of critical thinking skills. So um, another aspect is to ensure that our trainers are also capacitated to develop 
uh, these critical thinking skills. We may want to teach it, but if we want it to cut across everything that an officer does, it is important we have trainers who can match up to critical thinking uh, uh, training. So are our instructors critical thinkers themselves? How creative are they in infusing critical thinking into their lessons and evaluation processes? Teaching critical thinking is not easy. Unfortunately, military officers are not typically taught to think or learn independently. They, and they rarely pick up these skills um, uh, on, on the way on their own. It is a learned ab uh, ability. It is not inherent. It doesn't come naturally to us. So uh, although some individuals are naturally inquisitive, but a majority of us will require training in order to develop these skills. And it has to be deliberate, and it is sometimes referred to as a scientific method that is systematic and procedural. Uh, the other challenge we have is the lack of training, of course, and the lack of information and preconceptions that critical thinking is a difficult thing. But this is because it is not taught progressively and our students encouraged to practice it. So it is an interactive process, one that demands participation of both uh, the, the instructor and the students. But this is easier said than done. You're aware that probably most students would resist critical thinking, the critical thinking process. But uh, Russell says, most people would rather die than think, and often do. Many of General, us are more you have, comfortable. General, uh, you have one minute, General. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, so most of us would be comfortable just um, with learning that allows us to sit back. So in conclusion, critical thinking must be taught deliberately. We must be prepared to teach it. And today, the African officer cannot be effective without critical thinking. And I end with Martin Luther's words that the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and critically. Intelligence plus character. That is the true goal of education. Thank you very much.